let's get right into it. We have our special guest, Jeremy Bird. Again, he is the executive uh, VP in charge of the driver experience. So we are uh, thankful for him to come on. And with that being said, Jeremy, thanks for coming on. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sergio. Thanks for having me. Jeremy, welcome to Show Me The Money. <laughs> thanks for having me. Looking forward to touching with you guys today and, and hopefully many times in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, thank you for showing up, really. It's an important day for drivers and for Lyft as well, obviously. You know, we put out the video. It's doing really well. Uh, people are, you know, some are liking the changes, some are not. But that's not the that's not why you're here specifically. But um, so unlike Lyft's um, DAC, right, the, what is that called? Driver Advisory Council, you came to the right place, right? This is the This is the house that the drivers built. And uh, I can, you know, I can assure you, you will get good information. So um, we're going to jump right into the changes, obviously, right? That was announced today and I was under embargo. I kept my mouth shut like I promised. <laughs> but then most of these things have been floating around or being piloted right around the country. And, you know, fortunately, I have eyes and ears everywhere. And then when they send me the screenshots, I go, oh, look at this. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, well, this is good. That's bad. But I want to start with um, your um, Reuters article or interview that you did for Reuters. So the headline was Lyft unveils improved, what does it say? Pay measures to attract more drivers, right? Is Lyft having issues with uh, keeping drivers around? Is that what's happening? Or is that a misleading well, headline? Well, we're always, uh, that, that's not, it's not exactly, we didn't write the headline. Uh, but I mean, we're doing uh, the changes that you see today, right? Which are really around uh, increased um, transparency and listening to driver pain points that we've heard both from you individually. I know you talked to me about some of these things in the last several months, as well as drivers, whether it's at um, different roundtables, on listening to them online, having conversations, getting in cars and driving ourselves. Um, we're, it's, these changes are really to address some of those pain points. So it's always about to attract more, more drivers. We want more folks to come to the platform. But you know, as you've said to me many times, Sergio, it's also about making the experience for those who are on the platform better and wanting them to come back and have a better experience on the platform every time they come. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, I know you have a history of politics, right? You were, um, you ran uh, President Obama's South Carolina campaign, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And you helped them out with that, obviously. And so you do have a soft spot for the hard, you know, working men and women drivers of Lyft, I'm pretty sure, right? So uh -huh. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, just talk a little bit about um, these changes, not changes, but uh, by the way, you know, our show is called Show Me the Money. So you're here to show us the money. Is that true? <laughs> because that's, if it is, that's, that's, that's what I'm here for. Okay, let's get right into it. So, um, you know, the first thing that I want to actually hit upon is um, something that, you know, I don't know how much of this we should take credit as Show Me The Money, because I've been talking to Lyft about this for a year now, you know, especially with upfront fares, trips going longer and drivers just working for free, right? And so let's, let's talk a couple of minutes about that. So uh, Lyft introduced something that uh, drivers will get paid more if a trip goes longer in the duration. So, you know, give us your input about that. Yeah. Um, and, and you said this when you were mentioning, you know, me and sort of my role here. I, I come from a, a working class background. I grew up in a trailer park. Uh, when I think about the 1.3 million folks who have driven on the platform in the last year, it's, it's not a number, right? These are people who are mothers, and fathers, they're entrepreneurs, they're caregivers. Um, they're coming for many reasons, right? Some are coming, you know, to make this is their primary source of income. Others are coming because their 29 hour a week job in the grocery store isn't making ends meet for them. Some are coming because they want to have, they want to make enough money to have the excellent uh, wedding that they, that they want to have. They want to send their kids somewhere. They want to pay for, for soccer. So um, it is uh, about listening. And, and so all the changes you're talking about is about listening to you. It's about listening to drivers every time I get in the lift. It's about listening to drivers at round tables, it's about listening to drivers in all the various ways customer care as people are, Calling in, and those a lot of those pain points, as you mentioned, um, and and the name of your show are about earnings, right? And really about fair and transparent earnings. So earlier this year, we rolled out the seventy percent guarantee on the earnings commitment as a response to what we were hearing from drivers. And this is sort of you can imagine this is just being an extension of that. And one of the things that you told us, you told me, I think about a year ago, and that we heard from drivers over and over again is uh, when the upfront fare changes, when when 
and there was traffic that we didn't expect, or you had to go out of the way for some reason, uh, the, the stuck in traffic pay or the five minutes delay pay is a response to that specifically and in, in to make sure that every ride is worth the effort. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I think that's long overdue, but then I know how things, you know, the, the wheels don't turn fast as fast as drivers like, obviously, but I think that's a good change. The other thing that I wanted to talk about as far as earnings are concerned on nature hike trips, we call it nature hike because, <laughs> you know, we take an 80 mile trip for 40 cents a mile. And I'm going like, why would anybody even accept that? Because look, when our frontier showed up with all honesty, right, it was something called rebalancing. And, you know, short trips are going to pay a little bit more. Long trips are going to pay less, but then it happened to be a lot less. So, and then, you know, these trips are being rejected by the dozens, thousands, probably. Well, for from people who watch us, probably, because we tell them, you know, recline, you know, decline and recline. Um, so what's the change there? I mean, it's a little bit of vague, right? I wrote the article too, one on our newsletter. Oh, I saw it says it. we're going to get paid more. I'm like, so explain us like how, you know, again, we're up to the whims of the algorithm. So I'm not sure you know, how much more we're going to get paid for nature hikes, but how's that going to work out? Yeah, so uh, we call that out of your way pay or destination aware. So when you're going to a location where either regulatorily you can't pick up a rider where you're going, or uh, we know that it's low density, you know, like to your point around a uh, nature hike, or you're going somewhere where there's not a lot of density there. Uh, we're adjusting the pay on the front end to make that ride more attractive. And it's exactly what you said, which is, you know, unlike most places, uh, most companies in the country, you know, when we put out that uh, upfront fare, like you have the choice, right? You have the choice whether or not to accept that ride. And we're competing against, you know, other rides you can accept on other platforms or other things that you can do. Um, so we need to make that as attractive as possible and make sure we're factoring in where you're going to drop off that passenger matters. If you're going somewhere busy, you're going to get a ride back. Our job is to make sure when you drop that person off or before you drop them off, you're getting a ride so you can put in the queue and get going. But when you're going somewhere, it's going to be a lot harder to back. We need to we need to adjust that pay on the front end. Yeah, hopefully it does get adjusted because I'm pretty sure starting tomorrow, I'll start getting screenshots from all over the country because, oh, they're not paying more. I'm like, well, we got to have a comparison. So in a, few, in a couple of months. I look forward to the conversation yeah. with you about that for sure. Yeah, that's definitely. We will have conversations about that. So, you know, while we're at the earnings, there's one more thing that's, you know, that, that is concerning earnings is that something new called preferred driver, right? Um, so preferred drivers, supposedly, we're going to get 5% more. Um, and uh, if we do get over certain thresholds, which I think they're pretty, you know, the bar is set pretty low. I mean, 25% acceptance rate, 12%, I think, cancellation rate, yep. driving score of 60% and three safety flags or less, people will get more trips. I get that. But then 5%, uh, you know, I asked this to the other people that I talked to, and I said, 5% over what? We don't, we, you know, the, look, upfront algo is set up to shave. I mean, look, we've proven that a million times. It's not the point, but 5% over what, Jeremy? Like, what are we getting 5% over? Yeah, so no you, card. yeah, so you, you mentioned preferred. Well, I think I think the, the important thing there is, like you, like you said earlier, th these are not uh, thresholds that are set incredibly high, but they are set for 25% um, uh, in terms of the acceptance rate and 12% of the cancellation rate is, you know, every time that, We've got to make sure we're giving you the offer that's worth your while, which is what a lot of these changes are around. Uh, and then we got to make sure for those folks who aren't accepting for some reason or the other at a, at a threshold that's below 25%, we want to make sure that we're going to prioritize uh, those drivers that are providing that service to riders, right? Because every time uh, we let something lapse, it's a longer time that a rider has to wait. And all this is about more riders, right? If there are more riders coming to our platform, more riders coming to rideshare in general, you're going to do better as a driver, right? We'll do better. You'll do better. We both, we all benefit when there are more riders coming. You're more utilized, um, and you get to even be. We can we can be um, on the same side in terms of just just increasing that. Um, so, preferred driver says for those folks who are hitting those thresholds, we're going to give a boost, and you'll get that five percent uh, increase in certain in certain regions, um, and that's just over what we would otherwise have set in the in the in the area. Yeah, I mean that remains to be seen because you know the, with the upfront algorithm, what happens is that. You know, look, all the bonuses and the turbo and, and, and you know, not the right challenges, obviously. I haven't seen one in like eight months now, but um, it's okay. <laughs> uh, all the turbo and then the bonus, meaning surge, right? What happens is that when the surge is high, upfront fare, the base fare getting lowered by the algo. Look, both companies do this. We, we talked about this. Is there anything else in this package that uh, you want us to hit upon? Because 
but seriously, I mean, like we were talking in the green room, right? I mean, you're the face of the driver experience. Driver experience entails four things, right? When David was on about over a year ago, and he really listened, and you know, a lot of things have changed actually, which I appreciate. So, so for this whole package, Jeremy, I'm taking the credit. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah well, no, but uh, you know what it is though. So David left us at the altar, which is fine, David. You know, <laughs> next time I see you. <laughs> uh, but uh, the point I'm trying to make: you're the head of this. How long have you been with Lyft, by the way? I've been with Lyft for five years, um, but I've been the head of the driver experience for like the last six or seven months. I was six or on seven our call before. Okay, so I've been with Lyft for seven and a half years. So I have about seven years at uh, head start on you. But here's the thing. Um, I talked to David about four things, four things that are on our community's mind, okay? Number one is earnings, always earnings, earnings. Yep. So who doesn't want to make more money? Number two is unjust deactivations. Number three is driver safety. And number four is black hole support, we call it. So I would really like right here and now would like to get your word that maybe every couple of months you show up because I know you're busy, you know, you have 30 minutes to do this and in 30 minutes to discuss all these things, just, you know, is, is really just not enough time. So I was thinking maybe every couple of months while you gain more experience on the job, you come back and we discuss these individual issues as opposed to just lump sum everything. And then a year later, we'll come back and talk about it again. So, uh, you said yes. I'll take your word for it that uh, when there are developments. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say it, not just in the green room, but but on your show where everybody can see. I'm happy to come back. I think that's a great idea. I think you're right. There's 30 minutes is not enough time. We're going to start with some today, but I know we'll have a lot more to talk about. Can, can I say though to your other question there at the beginning was like what else is in the world that I do want to talk about because it was sort of sure absolutely so, yeah. obviously earnings like you mentioned is one of the most important things. Um, there's a couple other things in there though that I that I think are are really important as we think about earnings transparency. Um, and it's um, relatively small, but I think it matters a lot. Um, and you mentioned it in your write-up earlier today. It's the um, transparency that we're showing on each ride so that you don't have to do the math in your head. And we heard from many drivers, you know, yeah. uh, trying to do the math on the short ride versus long ride and how much you're making per hour. So we're, we're adding that into the accept screen where you can see the value of the ride, like how much you're going to make uh, in, when you're in that ride um, per hour. And so there's some other, I think, transparency pieces of this that matter. The other piece I wanted to I wanted to talk about is the economic impact, um, economic mobility pieces of it. Um, so there's a bunch in here around just thinking about, and I mentioned earlier, um, I know you care a lot about the holistic lives that drivers are living, right? Like the different reasons that they're on the platform. One of the things we want to make sure we're doing is uh, providing economic mobility for folks who are coming on the platform. So there's a couple of things in this sort of package of rollouts I think are important. One is we partnered up with Merit America, which is a, a project that's providing drivers with access to education uh, for tech-enabled jobs. Um, we think that's hugely important uh, to provide that opportunity. And Rideshare is a great uh, place to get that because you can work your schedule around the classes in such a way that we've seen many people go on and, and do great things in their careers um, by doing this on their own and now providing it through the platform. There's also Lyft Direct 2.0, which is working on ways in which we can provide financial opportunity and services for folks to be able to um, you know, make more money uh, as they're they're putting aside money and, and a bunch of different things because we're thinking about what, what I'm thinking about with driver pay overall is yes we got to do all the things we talked about with transparency and earnings fairness we also have to figure out a way both to reduce costs right and you, you've talked about this you've got a lot of partnerships that you've um, you've talked about in other ways that we can use the scale of the platform to allow folks to uh, spend less whether that's on some of the things we're doing through the elite program for uh, cash, cash, back, cash back and things like that. Um, so a lot of this is just thinking about the overall economic situation of drivers and what we can do to hopefully provide a better opportunity for folks. So those other parts yeah. of, the, of the platform. And again, I'm happy to come talk about any of those at length in the future. Well, we're, we're, I mean, now that, you know, people have seen you, so we, we, we want to see your pretty face here. I mean, as often as possible, because look, we are driver's advocates, but seriously, I mean, I put myself in Lyft shoes and then I wish Lyft and execs and other the other TNC put themselves in our shoes, right? So you, I know, um, as I said, you have um, a, a, you know a career in politics before you join Lyft, but um, there is something that happens every year, right? The president does a state of the union, okay? So what do you think the state of the union is between rideshare companies and their drivers at the moment? What do you think? Where do you think we are? Yeah, what a great question. Um, you mentioned it a little bit with David coming on, you know, earlier. I do think he has said over and over again since he came on as CEO of Lyft that our, if we are 
customer obsessed, it will drive profitable, profitable growth and create a more successful lift and a more successful experience for drivers on the platform. And I think we really have seen tremendous change. I don't think that's a motto. I don't think it's a slogan. I see it every day in different meetings that I have with him and other executives here. Um, and, and really just the amazing people that I work with in this building. There is a, a real passion uh, for increasing and being better and doing everything we can to have the driver experience be something that, uh, you know, if, if, we, if you are making more on our platform and you're having a great experience, you're gonna come back, you're gonna drive more. If you drive more, more riders are gonna have faster ETAs. We're gonna have more riders. It's gonna be better for Lyft. It's better, it's the right thing to do. And it's also gonna be better for us. And okay. I think David really believes in that, right? And I think I've seen a lot of changes and we've got a lot of work to do. So I'd yeah. say, you know, we're on the right path, but, um, and you'll be the first to, to tell us this, we still have a lot of work to do. We've got improvements we need to make every single day. We've got to increase the number of riders that are coming to the platform to increase your utilization. We've got to in, in, in improve our customer service. Um, and we've got to do a lot of things that um, we'll keep listening. And if we keep listening, uh, we make those changes, we can start to get people to really understand that together we can be on the same side of the table uh, and we can push forward for your success and ours. Yeah, we're definitely going to be on the same side of the table at some point. But, uh, you know, my, my, my thought on the State of the Union is, you know, from close to 300,000 members that we have on this channel, um, the dissatisfaction uh, level, I, I've been around for seven and a half years, eight years on Uber, seven and a half on Lyft. I have never seen these many complaints. And since we're talking about earnings, I actually, while right before the show, I got a text from Lyft saying, hey, Serge, 98% of your riders rated you five stars. Why don't you get out and drive, right? Then I thought, okay, that's awesome because I am the face of Lyft for those 15 minutes that I'm in the car with the rider. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows David. Nobody knows anybody. Sure. They just know Lyft. They know me. So if I have, if I'm in a good mood, right, then I'm going to service the Lyft passenger better. So the you know I'm not going to take it out on them because Lyft did something screwy, right? Well, talking about you know, so today let's focus a little bit, uh, whatever time we have remaining, on a couple of things. <clears throat> One is earnings, obviously. So I've been on the platform for seven and a half years, and. Um, I've seen all the changes, obviously. I've seen the platforms grow, the marketplace grow, the scale obviously came into play. And, uh, but what I've not seen is, um, you know, you live in San Francisco, I live in LA, to two most, one of the, probably two of the most expensive cities on the planet. And there are a lot of drivers in LA and San Francisco, obviously. Do you think driver earnings have kept pace with inflation that they are experiencing? Forget about, I mean, we can talk about government gaslighting drivers you know, about maintenance expenses, you know, insurance expenses and, and, and all these things that has gone through the roof due to inflation that everybody's experiencing, but their rents and their, in, you know, everything else that they have to spend money on. Do you think uh, Lyft drivers' earnings have kept pace with inflation over the last three years, four years? I think, I think the, the median, this is, I think the median uh, earnings for drivers has kept pace since 2019. Um, however, I think your point is totally accurate, which is uh, our job is to figure out how do we continue to increase that. And the way we, got, we have to continue to increase that is, is to fight on multiple fronts. Um, and I, I, these are not small things. I know you, you, you mentioned insurance, but this is the biggest one. This is the biggest cost driver. It doesn't benefit drivers. It doesn't benefit Lyft. And it doesn't benefit riders. Because before you get in the car in L.A., um, you're already we're already spending a ton of money on unnecessary insurance costs, completely unnecessary insurance costs. And so we, and this is what I fought for before I came over to the driver team on the policy side is to reduce those costs. Um, if we reduce those costs, more money goes into your pocket. Uh, it will be better for Lyft overall. It'll be better for riders too. Uh, it's one of the biggest challenges that we face is to reduce those because those have been growing significantly higher than inflation uh, over the last three years. And we have to bring those down. We're doing everything we possibly can to bring those down. Because again, if we bring those down, you can make more money, you'll drive more with Lyft. It'll be better for Lyft, it'll be better for rideshare overall, and it'll be better for riders because they'll have more drivers on the platform and they'll get better service level. Yeah, I, I agree, but I, I'm gonna you know, um, agree to disagree on one thing. Um, I don't think since 2019, my earnings on the Lyft platform have gone up 40% because that's what the government's at least saying that maintenance costs, insurance costs, 
which, you know, as we know, we're independent contractors, we're supposedly running our small business and our car is our tool that we take to work. Uh, I don't think it's up 40 percent, um, Jeremy. So um, the, the reason I'm saying that is because I drive. And yep. when I do drive, the reason, by the way, Lyft is sending me those messages because I haven't driven for Lyft for six months now. The reason for that is I cannot drive for base rates, do $3 trips and put how many of those I can put together, right? In 2024 to pick up a human, drive a mile, pick up a human, you know, get three bucks out of it. I can even buy a pack of gum with that these days. So I don't think driver earnings are up 40%. On top of everything else, as we know, you know, incentives have been cut due to macroeconomic conditions look more people like you said 1.3 million people are driving on the platform and that's not because it's so lucrative jeremy it's because macroeconomic conditions and barriers to entry is very low and then people just get in their car and drive make a couple hundred bucks here and there but i wanted to show you a couple of screenshots okay this is one of my trips that i did um it's this is 2024 this is in my neighborhood it's about eight minute trip pick up and drop off it's three dollars and twenty cents um, I've seen as low as 262, which was exactly the same when I first started, when I first joined Lyft platform in 2017, $2.62. Now, those days I did all of these, all the 262s, because I had, you do hundred trips, get another, you know, $800, but those subsidized fantasy days are over for the drivers. So I cannot, you know, look at a $3 20 cent trip and run a profitable business if I'm trying to run a profitable business. Okay. There's another one. This is from this is from Houston. Two dollars and twenty nine cents to drive somewhere half a mile, pick up a human, put him in the car, and drive somewhere another eighth of a mile for two dollars and twenty nine cents. I mean, by looking at these things, I have millions of screenshots. Literally, my hard disk is full. I don't think I can, you know, I don't think I'm going to agree with you that the driver earnings are up since 2019, keeping pace with inflation. And the last one I'm going to show you is this one. This is from Orange County. I got this from a driver yesterday. This is lift from Lyft going to a driver. Drivers in Orange County earned 21 an hour on average last month, including tips and bonuses. Take the expenses out of five, six bucks an hour. We're at 15. I mean, I might as well go flip burgers. So the earnings are not keeping pace with inflation, Jeremy. So, Sergio, I think we got a lot to unpack there. I think you, you said a couple of things that I absolutely agree with and it's how i see things and i think most drivers see them and then obviously we can we can talk about um either you know the in the individual uh rides there or the overall the overall points that you're making but I, I agree first and this is why i love the platform and i think why a lot of people were drawn to it including many of the conversations i've had with you is it is your own small business it really is your own small business and it provides a, a tremendous amount of flexibility and independence that almost no nowhere else uh, in the world provides. Um, the ability to start and stop when you want, the ability to work at two places at the exact same time. You can't do that if you're, you know, if you're a barista at Starbucks, you can't run over to Pete's uh, when you don't like what you're making and, and do it over there. You can't decide to go do it, you know, and, and that's the beauty of, of the platform, right? And and that's why you're able to to say no to that two dollar ride if you didn't want it or the three dollar ride if you didn't want I it. Do. Um, yeah, and you you've told me this before. Um, so I you know there's other screenshots I could show you that are obviously completely different than that. And I do Absolutely. think no, I, I'm not I, telling you. Know, you know, I'm, you I, know, I agree. Not, I agree. Yeah. But I think even on a 2024, a minimum fare trip should not be yeah. three dollars, two dollars. It should be maybe five. And you know. We have talked about this before. Maybe Rideshare is such a horrible business that you guys cannot charge more because the other Darth Vader over there, you know, is competing with you guys. And I understand all the intricacies of this stuff. Maybe you guys should charge more in order to pay the driver more. I mean, I... I but you're, you're, so, Sergio, on that front, because I, you know, as somebody that I really care about this, I, I, I do really care about this. Here's the, the balance you have, right? You have two customers on the platform. You have a rider and you have a driver. And we're the, we're the marketplace to try to set the right price to pay you fairly and to get the most riders. And so it is, the, you need that equilibrium, right? Because let's take Seattle for an example, where regulations has very high pay in Seattle. The problem in Seattle is drivers are making more per trip, but there are way fewer rides because we've priced out low income people and a lot of moderate uh, income people from being riders on the platform. So drivers overall are not making more money in Seattle because it's gone too far one way, right? And so what you need is pay, you, we need fair pay, but you also need to make sure that you can, that the rider can afford it because 
the ride, you need more rides in order for you to be better utilized and for drivers to ultimately make more money. It's finding that balance in between to pay fairly, but also to charge only enough. And the way that we have to do that together is we also have to figure out ways to get the cost down, insurance being one of the biggest ones so that we can balance both of those out. But that's the, that's the challenge of the marketplace always, not an excuse or anything, but that's just saying about where you need to, yes, pay more and push for more, but also make sure we get it in the right place that enough riders can afford it, that they'll um, you know, make sure the platform is healthy and that there's enough rides constantly. Absolutely. I mean, look, you, you know, TNCs have done something wonderful. I mean, they put $40 billion on fire to create a marketplace that functions, right? But on the on one side, of the, I mean, this is a two-sided marketplace and you have the rider and you have the driver, right? You have to create enough supply to get the pickup ETAs down. I understand the business, in you know, better than anybody probably. But my issue with it is that we're in 2024. My cost of living has gone skyrocketed. It really has as a driver you're right and and i don't think my earnings have kept pace if not have declined with upfront fares and you know i know you have a couple of extra minutes a couple of more minutes in that half hour uh i'm gonna you know discuss something about earnings and then we'll end it there with, do, with your promise that you're going to show up and we're going to talk about unjust deactivations for an episode and we're going to talk about you know safety of drivers which we know we've been talking about that issue and support, which, you know, I can mention her, Amina, you know, I've been working with her and I think she's doing good stuff, but I don't think it's anywhere near enough. Um, so one of our viewers, by the way, we have an amazing viewership here, right? Well, we, have, we literally have like PhD students. We have master's degree guys that are driving. They love doing what they're doing. So one of them sent me this, right? So we have also a tradition on our show. Um, I, I say hocus pocus a lot. So for whoever's not driving, when I say hocus pocus, we all take shots. So, <laughs> so, so he sent me this, and then um, I know this may be a little hard to read, but this is a driver from LA, right? And I know how expensive California insurance rates have been, and I I promised him I'll show you this, and then I will send you these screenshots, by the way, so you can your team can analyze it. So the the purple line up there, the purple chart, is the so-called estimated external expenses. This, by the way, starts January 1 of 2024. It runs to the last week, actually. So there is a direct, so when, when the 70-30 guarantee showed up, I mean, I said hocus pocus and people at Lyft did not like it. Uh, it's because I feel like there's a direct correlation between um, the external expenses line item and then the Lyft take rate. Now, I, I don't care how much Lyft makes, but when external expenses, you know, non-transparent fashion can move up and down. And as we can see, the trend is not your friend here. External expenses are going through the roof, right? And Lyft says most of it is commercial insurance. Our community and myself, we're not buying that. And then so conversely, if you look at the green chart, green chart is Lyft's take rate on this specific driver, right? I mean, you have the data, obviously, for Lyft. And, and but a, uh, what do you say about this? Is this 70-30 thing working for you guys? Um, are drivers happy about this and seeing those external expenses going absolutely bonkers? Um, I, it's really hard to see the chart, so I won't, I won't try to answer all of it. But I do think if, if I look at the external expenses, it's almost all insurance. It's, it's almost um, all insurance. Uh, and yeah, forty-seven those, a mile? It's up to dollar forty-seven a mile. Pro probably. I mean, in, in is this L.A.? Yeah. Yeah, in LA, I mean, every ride is between seven and ten dollars in insurance costs, and this comes from a couple of factors. It's not, it's, and it's not the insurance of the driver. We uh, on in the California, the way the law is written, is that we are paying, and therefore it's negative for drivers for not only like general commercial insurance, but anybody else on the road who is has doesn't have insurance or is uh, has has is underinsured. We have to also ensure that California is one of the most expensive places in the country. You see this in New Jersey and, and other places. And that goes up if in our case almost every October. So I, I don't know if that line is yeah. like, you know, when, when that is, but um, in terms of the increase. Um, so I will say, yeah, I've done a bunch of surveys of thousands of drivers on the earnings commitment. And we find it to be, very, we find it to be generally uh, popular because uh, we're making the, the commitment and we show it up. We show it. Like you say, show me the money. It's not just that we said we're going to do it. It said if we're below the 70%, we're going to pay you for it, uh, which we have. Um, and so I think it's, you know, it's not just uh, we're committed to this. We say we want to do something. It's that we said we're going to actually commit to it and make it happen. 
Um, and again, the average is well over 80, close to 90% in terms of the driver take after those expenses. But we're saying we'll never go, uh, you know, the driver will never take home less than 70. And we've, and we've, we've, we've shown folks the money on that. We need to, and we need to work together on this, get the external fees, especially insurance down. But overall, I think um, it's been a commitment that, like you said earlier, David made and uh, wasn't something that was easy to do in a low margin business, but something we're committed to because it's the right, to do, right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to end up on negative you know, tangent here, but um, the 70-30 thing after external expenses. So we're, we're simple people here, Jeremy. You know, some of us are more educated than others, but when a rider pays 100 bucks for a trip and the driver receives 50, the driver looks at it as Lyft took 50%. You know, because driver has expenses as well, right? I mean, we're not bitching and wanting to lift saying that my insurance has gone up, you know, literally, personally speaking, my personal insurance with State Farm has gone up 48% this year so far. I have to pay for that. I have to pay for maintenance. I have to pay for all those. So Lyft's kind of complaining, saying, yeah, our insurance rates are going up after external expenses, which we just kind of all over the place, really. There is no rhyme or reason for what it is. To trip to trip, they're changing. You know, there, I think there's more work to be done as far as the, that 70 30 transparency thing is concerned so before you go i'm going to announce something so for people i don't know how many of you are here five six hundred of you whoever is in la uh, i'm going to be there jeremy is going to be there there's going to be a taco truck there between 11 30 a.m and 1 30 p.m october 23rd we'll mention this a couple times going forward we'll do a short video uh, please come down, meet us. Well, you guys know me anyway, but then meet Jeremy. You know, he's a super nice guy. He's going to be at LAX. We're going to be at LAX. We're going to eat some tacos and we're going to talk some shop and meet a whole bunch of you, hopefully. But um, so I'll give you the floor, Jeremy, in closing. So you promised you will come back. We'll discuss other issues. Um, again, I, you know, my hat's off to you to just coming on and, and um, talking to us. Uh, much appreciated. So floor is yours. I'll just, I mean, I'll say, well, yeah, I love, I love being on the show. I'm happy to come back. Uh, and more importantly, I want to see drivers, you know, out at the LA event. We're going to be doing events across the country. Um, we're only going to make the platform better if we're listening. And if we're listening at scale, right? We want to hear um, what people are experiencing, some, some things that people are experiencing in different states in different ways. Um, but our goal is to, um, I've said this a couple of times on the show, but if drivers who are listening and drivers who are on the platform are successful, you mentioned it, they're going to have a better experience for the rider. So they're going to be happier. It's going to be a better experience. Uh, and they're going to spend more time driving, which is going to make uh, the experience for riders on the platform better. And it's going to make Lyft better. So uh, excited to talk to you, talk to you more, um, and talk to your listeners more at every chance I can. Well, thank you. Much appreciated. Like, unlike the other company says, you guys are a little bit more human. Um, you actually, a couple of times, you know, in, during the earnings call, David refers to the drivers as drivers not earners, not other things, you know, that, that that's like, I don't know. by the way, without drivers, there is no gig economy. So I know, I'm sure you know that, but um, I'm going to let you go. I, I appreciate it. Bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for showing up and we will see you shortly. Thanks, Sergio. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me The Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.